and we're back. Hi. Hope everyone had a good Christmas break over the weekend. If you're still on your Christmas break, congratulations. I'm in the office doing some year-end stuff uh, and prep for next year, like making lots of stickers. If you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to day 13 of the Iguana Milling Challenge. And you're asking yourself, what exactly is the Iguana Milling Challenge? I'll start with uh, the thinking behind the event, so why we decided to do an event like this. Sesha, our mother company, has spent the last 10 years developing a new coding technology for tools. Uh, they had this idea that if you could resharpen a diamond coating, which are generally very thick uh, and cause rounding around the cutting edges, if you could resharpen it, it would further or greatly expand the lifetime of the tool, increase the quality of the surface finishes, etc. And they spent the last 10 years uh, following this idea. They finally accomplished it, um, and then they had a problem when they told people how much further the tool will run with this new coding technology. No one believed them. So we had a meeting, uh, discuss how we could address this, and then we pitched this idea of having a live stream event, a totally open and honest, where we put one tool in the machine and let it run. Um, and we then took this idea to our different partners, which we've been highlighting throughout the event. Um, you'll see videos from Kern, Ölhead, Regofix, Hypermill, Langtechnik, and Simtrode. Uh, more about them later in the stream. We'll highlight them again. Um, and they all thought it was a great idea. So on the 16th of this month, um, we put one of these iguana tools, it's a one millimeter ball tool, with this new coating and just let it run. And it's been running nonstop since the 16th. Well, almost nonstop. Um, if you see it in the stream, we had water supply issues to the machine. Uh, this morning we had a small programming mistake um, and the entire way can has been awesome. Marvin again this morning came in and found a mistake, saved the day. And so this crazy idea um, would not be possible without all of our partners. If you missed any of the opening, um, you can see them under highlights in our Twitch channel. You can also go to tesha.de and they have all the highlights, including the opening, any time that I've checked in, partner videos, um, image videos and interviews, and just a ton of information about the tool. So I highly recommend uh, that you check that out. I'm happy to say now, if you look at the machine, we've hit 250 hours. As a reminder, a standard tool lasts 10 hours generally. So. Everyone's a little bit more relaxed. Uh, I might even go as far to say as it's starting to become a little bit fun. So we'll see. I'll continue to do these check-ins daily during the week when I'm here in the office. Uh, if I run out of things to say, I don't know, next week, we're just gonna have to start to do giveaways or something like that. Um, as you can see behind me, you can't see it right now, but in the corner, uh, it always shows what design is milling. And we've milled all the partner designs that we wanted to do first, and now we've started with the first Alien Tools design. And just like our other partners, um, we filmed a little video where we introduced Alien Tools, exactly what it is and how it fits into the Sesha family. So here's an interview with me, enjoy. Small note, we were filming this very late, and I thought it would be funny to throw in a little joke about me wearing glasses. It's not funny. I beg for your forgiveness, but enjoy the video. What is Alien Tools? Alien Tools is a project that we started with Tesha around three and a half years ago with a focus on the dental market. It was really 
a second brand where we could try out new things like crazy marketing, online marketing, online efficient processes, and things like that. It's gone so well that we are now stepping outside of dental and launching the industrial lines as well. How did Alien Tools start? This is a longer story, so I will try to keep it short. But essentially, in my previous company, I was looking for high quality tools to sell along with the products that we were manufacturing. And Sesha was looking for a partner to enter the dental field. So that worked out perfectly. When I was looking for a manufacturer, I called some friends and one said, you need to try it, Sesha. These tools are really good. So we ordered some tools, sent them to a couple different labs, and the feedback was all the same. These tools are really good. So I called Stefan Sesha and asked if I could come tour the production facilities, which I did, and I knew right away this was the partner that I was looking for. Not only was it the high-tech facilities, but as Stefan took me around and I met the different team members, you really got this feeling that this was a group of people that cared about what they were making. And then Stefan showed me a top secret project that they were working on, which was taking this multi-layer diamond coating and then sharpening it with a laser, which had not been done before. And I thought, perfect. This checks all my boxes. High quality products, good people, and forward thinking. Unfortunately, shortly before the project was to launch, my previous company was sold and all open projects were canceled. I, of course, felt terrible, so I called Stefan and I said, give me a week, come to Berlin, and I'll pitch an idea of how I would enter the dental market as a new brand. So yeah, that's how Alien Tools was born. It was an apology. Why Alien Tools? Alien Tools because we wanted something fresh, something that had to do with futuristic, and something where you had a lot of room to play with. For example, you could do silly things like this or stuff like this. You get the idea. There's a lot of room to work with. But mostly it's telling the story of these little tiny products that's most likely the smallest part of your manufacturing process, but also extremely important. And this is not some side product or plus product. This is the product of Alien Tools and Tsesha. And the fact that in the Tsesha group, there's 250 families that live from this product and almost 60 years of improvements and testing and always pushing the boundaries. It's a story that we aim to tell and that really is the goal of Alien Tools, is to tell that story. Uh, someone told me that it made me look smart. No? What's my favorite part about Alien Tools? That's a tough question. I would probably break it into two categories, one being what is the goal of Alien Tools, which is how to let the people know that when they get our tools, it's something special. So how do we communicate that from, how do we design the labels so that they're more informative and more attractive? How do we design our shipping packaging so that it's funky and functional? And I mean, that's the whole reason that we color the tools. It doesn't add any function. It's just to let them know when they take it out of the packaging, it looks different. It is different. Someone once told me, they see how much work we put into this, how much love goes into it, and they don't know if they could do it because at the end of the day, it's just a tool, which tells me that they don't understand what we're trying to accomplish. And which brings me to the second part is, 
how it's accepted in the market and really meeting the people that use these tools because we just make the tools. The people that use them are the ones with the ideas. They're the ones with the blocks and material where they mill something out of it. And really that's been the greatest part is hearing that our tools made their lives a little bit better, made their work a little bit cooler, and really meeting the makers and learning their stories. All in all, it's been a pretty great almost four years. Um, it wouldn't be possible without the whole team at Sesha. So a big thank you to my Königsbachstein crew. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. So that's it. You've seen an, enough of me. Um, I'll end this with just a small note about at the end of the video, I talked about learning maker stories and that's really been the part that I've enjoyed the most the last two years is really discovering this online community of makers, uh, first through Instagram and the Insta Machinist community. And I've met uh, personally and people that I've only met online through this community and it's really been awesome. It's changed my mind of what the internet is. Uh, before I thought it was overwhelmingly bad, um, but this community shows that there's so much potential for just positivity. Um, who could I name from the dental side? I mean, there's, there's small companies that show you through their stories just the entire journey um, from start to finish of building a company, all the problems that come with it. So it's highly entertaining and I recommend uh, making that part of your daily routine is to checking in with these people. From Dental, Keith from Toothworks, Darren Kelsey, uh, CADCAM Energy. From the industrial side, uh, Caleb Oliva, uh, Split 141, he makes, or he made these cool little tweezers uh, that I bought, Helical Fresh. On the welding side, Fidget Things, who makes stuff like this. Little fidget, fidget spinners or little box openers that open like this. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. Um, tac tactical keychains, I don't have one here because it's been impossible to get over the last years. Uh, Eric CNC, who else? Oh, Freelux, something I have every day, always. I have the last Black Synergy one. Um, five Axis Maker, for example. They're, they make little tabletop machines uh, in London. And in this example, they have an indication where they cut these clear liners. Uh, with one of our flat uh, double flute tools. They're also awesome. Uh, and finally, the one I'd like to highlight, there's a ton. So if you have any questions about who to follow, uh, just write me or write me on Instagram. I'll give you a list. But Salvon, uh, the hero of the day, who makes these cool little keycaps, uh, released his own keyboard. He is the definition of uh, just showing you the entire process of building a company. And it's been fun watching him go from his small garage to now uh, larger manufacturing facilities. He also helps promote the event, um, like told Jordan 64 TV on Twitch uh, to raid our Twitch stream last night. So thank you for that, Jordan. I, I owe both of you guys a couple of hoodies or something. But that's it. Uh, check out the machining community, also on Twitch. Um, I'm relatively new on Twitch. So 
if you have suggestions on anyone to follow, let me know. Um, and just go and support the makers out there. That's all for me today. I'll see you tomorrow.